change starts small. I don't know about you, but I have been feeling that the world needs big change. So when I was appointed to lead an organization with that as its strap line, I thought, brilliant, I've got my dream job, especially given the organizational heritage set up by the visionary economist E.F. Schumacher and with a long track record of life-changing work. But lately, I've been wondering, did I make a mistake? I have three children, and in their lifetime, they've witnessed a reversal in progress on poverty and hunger, lived through a global pandemic, and the continual failure of leaders to address the existential threat of the climate crisis, which has been hanging over them since they were born. This summer, as we were sweltering in the highest temperatures ever recorded in the UK and listening to reports of fires and floods raging across different parts of the world, my daughter turned to me and said, is this what life is going to be like from now on? And that's why I'm wondering if I've made a mistake. Schumacher's philosophy of putting people and planet at the heart of economics and of change starting small so that it works for the people who need it most is as relevant today as when he was working 50 years ago. But there has not been sufficient commitment and investment to scale up sustainable solutions and deliver the big change that the world so badly needs. So many of us, in different ways, are grappling with these issues. So I'm going to tell you how I resolved them, with the help of a story of a life-changing photocopier. But first, I'm going to take you to a bus stop where I am waving a banner, a handmade banner, at a badly dressed politician from a political party I fundamentally disagree with. It's all rather stressful. So how did I find myself here? When my children were small, we moved into one of England's national parks. It's a beautiful area, attracting millions of visitors every year. But there are aspects of life there that need to change, including travel. It should be a fantastic way to get around, a, a fantastic place to get around by bike. And when I was growing up, cycling was integral to me developing my social life, my independence, and my fitness, and now it's the way that I manage my life and stay sane. But children where I live do not have that opportunity. There is so much fast traffic that they are driven everywhere, only exacerbating the emissions and the tra traffic problems. So a group of us decided to change this and were delighted when politicians agreed to invest in a safe cycle route linking all the villages in our valley with the secondary school, just as our kids were starting there. Success. Except, by the time my children left for university, only half that route had been built. Politicians giving up when it got a bit tricky. So we'd failed, until I saw a faded sign hanging from a lamppost advertising a meeting about the climate crisis at my village hall. Meetings at village halls, my experience, a lot of moaning, not a lot of action. But something made me drag myself out of the house, and to my amazement, so did so many other people 
that soon that hall was over capacity. We were all there for the same reason. To overcome that feeling of powerlessness and find ways to make a difference. And from the collective energy in that overfull village hall on that Monday night, our climate action group was born. And that's why I was waving my banner at that badly dressed politician. It was actually part of a strategic set of activities to tackle the climate crisis. We'd identified him as an important leverage point. He has one of the smallest majorities in Parliament and it was in his interest to help us. So we got him to introduce us to all sorts of influential people, which ultimately led to us receiving hundreds of thousands of pounds to showcase the future of low carbon transport in rural areas. But whatever we do in our small corner of the world will have no discernible impact on global emissions. So maybe what we're doing is utterly pointless. Actually, it's completely the reverse. Our group is the embodiment of one of my favorite Schumacher quotes. To talk about the future is only useful if it leads to action now. Changing the way people travel will bring ben benefits to millions of visitors and re residents alike. And finally, as part of this wider climate transformation, the second half of that safe cycle route is going to be built. So in my personal life, I have experienced how a group of people who develop a compelling vision for change can build the commitment and investment that takes that small change that we started almost a decade ago and turns it into something beyond what we could ever have imagined. So what about in my professional life? Well, that takes me to that life-saving photocopier, which, believe it or not, is helping to save millions of people's lives from flooding, which is one of the biggest consequences of the climate crisis. Already, almost a quarter of the world's population faces significant risk, and almost 80 million people a year are directly affected. So when I joined my organization, I wanted to understand what could be done to tackle this. The team started by explaining that 13 years ago, they got a new grant from an insurance company. Good, I thought. We know how to fundraise. And that money was used to buy a new photocopier. What? I thought, rapidly revising my assessment of our organizational capabilities and wondering again if I'd made a mistake, how on earth does that make any kind of difference? But that's where I was wrong, because the team had identified that company as an important leverage point in changing the way floods are managed. That first grant opened the door to a conversation between our two very different organizations. We soon found that we had shared interests in ensuring that floods had no negative impacts on the ability of people and businesses to thrive. And that became the vision that we rallied all sorts of other organizations around. The next grant, enabled us to carry on photocopying and to help to support 40,000 people in Bangladesh reduce the consequences of flooding in their communities. That matters deeply. 
but I couldn't help feeling what a drop in the floodwaters that work was, given the millions of people affected every year. But the work was part of a wider strategy. Evidence of what worked in Bangladesh, helping to convince the insurance company to invest millions in, in, in an ambitious partnership, in an ambitious partnership with development organizations. Together, we are combining the development the technical, the business, the risk management skills to keep two million vulnerable people safer from flooding. So I could see how that first small change was adding up to big impact. But nagging away at me was still that feeling that it's only reaching a small percentage of all the people whose lives are turned upside down by flooding every year. But now our partnership is using its joint leverage to get to the next level of scale. Across all the organizations, staff are having thousands of conversations with investors and decision makers to get an extra billion dollars invested in reducing flood risk and ensuring much more of that support goes to help those at the front line of the climate crisis. So did I make a mistake? Does big change really start small? Small changes matter. I know how it feels to feel powerless. But it is essential that all of us overcome that overwhelm and find ways of taking action even when the way forward is not entirely clear. And then we need to work intelligently with others building the commitment and investment to scale up sustainable solutions and create unstoppable momentum. There's a Schumacher quote about moving forward, about sailing into a better future. He said, I can't myself raise the winds that will blow us or this ship of ours into a better world. But I can at least raise the sails so that when the wind comes, I am ready. But 50 years on, the time of waiting for the winds of change has passed. We need more sails, we need bigger sails, and they all need to be pointing in the same direction. And as for the wind, we do need to raise it ourselves. We need millions of us to blow this planetary ship into a more sustainable future. So start small, but aim big.